To explain the Antarctic ozone hole, we first have to recall that the ozone layer protects us against harmful ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Without the ozone layer, we would be subject to 70 times more intense ultraviolet radiation than we have today. Um, the ozone hole, the Antarctic ozone hole, is an annually recurring phenomenon that appears in the months of August, September and October. And at its worst, uh, in typically late September, early October, virtually all ozone between 12 and 20 kilometers in the stratosphere is destroyed. Uh, this ozone destruction is caused by man-made gases, these um, so-called ozone-depleting substances. These gases are now more or less banned by the Montreal Protocol that came into effect in 1987. Um, these gases have a long lifetime in the atmosphere, so they come down very slowly at the rate of about 1% per year. And uh, in addition to that, we also have to recall that uh, some so-called replacement compounds, compounds that replace ozone depleting substances, they, some of these compounds are increasing rapidly in the atmosphere. So we really have to keep a close eye on the situation. What is the situation of the ozone hole in 2009? In 2009, the ozone hole uh, in its size and depth is pretty much average compared to the last uh, 10 years. And it is a bit smaller than in 2006, but that is also the year when we saw the largest ozone hole ever observed. Um, as long as the ozone depleting substances remain uh, at a high concentration in the atmosphere, we expect big ho ozone holes to, to occur uh, from one year to the next. And the healing uh, process of the Antarctic ozone layer will be quite long because of the long lifetime of these gases in the atmosphere. And complete recovery of the o Antarctic ozone layer is expected around the year 2065. What is the connection between the ozone hole and climate change? There are several links between uh, uh, the Antarctic ozone hole and climate change. <coughs> First of all, uh, we have to mention that uh, the ozone depleting uh, gases are also potent greenhouse gases. So that means that uh, phasing these gases out does something good, not only for the ozone layer, but also for the, the climate on our planet. And uh, actually it turns out that by 2010, so by next year, <coughs> Uh, the phase-out of ozone-depleting gases uh, will have been five times more efficient in uh, preventing climate warming than the targets in the first period of the Kyoto Protocol from 2008 to 2012.